Welcome to Answer the Call, the radio ministry of Heritage Baptist Church and Pastor Curtis McMiller. You know, folks, back in the 1740s, America was in a spiritual crisis over freedom, and pastors on horseback were preaching revival to every city and hamlet across our land. The Christian settlers answered the call, defeated a tyrant, and became the America we know. Today we have a tyrant of our own making, the invisible tyrant of unbelief. And once again, our pastors are raising the alarm, encouraging us to fight against this enemy we can't see. Here's Pastor McMiller to show us how to once again answer the call. Hello, friends, and welcome once again to another edition of the Answer the Call broadcast. Thank you so much for inviting us into your home this evening. Well, if you have your Bible handy, we're going to be turning to Genesis chapter number 27. Genesis chapter number 27. And in that portion of the Word of God, this evening, we're going to be looking at the tragedy of a lost blessing. The tragedy of a lost blessing. I'll have you note with me starting there at verse number 36. Listen to the Word of God. The Bible says... And he said, Is not he rightly named Jacob? For he had supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright, and behold, now he hath taken away my blessing. And he said, Hast thou not reservest a blessing for me? And Isaac answered and said unto Esau, Behold, I have made him, that is, Jacob, thy Lord, and all his brethren have I given to him for servants. And with corn and wine have I sustained him. And what shall I do now unto thee, my son? And Esau said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O oh, my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. You know, my friend, in the Bible, you'll find the word blessings 73 or more times. In various settings, it is often connected with an individual or a tribe or even a nation. For example, when speaking to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, verse 3, God said, I or and I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. We read further in the word of God in Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 26 through 28. When addressing the nation of Israel, God spoke through his servant Moses these words. Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse, a blessing, if ye obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day, and a curse, if ye will not obey the commandment of the Lord your God, but turn aside out of the way which I command you this day, to go after other gods which ye have not known. We move further still into the book of Proverbs and listen to this foundational verse found in Proverbs chapter 10, verse number 22. The Bible says, The blessings of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he, that is God, addeth no sorrow with it. Now, friends, when we think of blessings, it often gives us the suggestion of one who is giftedly endowed. It further yet remind us of one in our eyes who've tasted prosperity. Blessings come from God. Some would dare say, but wait a minute, preacher. I worked hard for everything that I own, that I have. 
Now, neighbor, that may be true. I would not doubt that you've worked hard for all that you have. But the word of God does declare this in Acts chapter 17, verse 26. For in him, that is in God, we live and move and have our being. God is the one who provided you and me with the body, the soul, the mind, the strength, and yea, even the favor to accumulate what we have. Listen, nothing good falls into a person's hand without God being the author or the initiator of it. For every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. James chapter 1 verse 17. Listen, just about everyone, especially those who would identify as Christians, often pray for God's blessings on their life. But on the other hand, there are those who are saddened because they've not experienced, they've not tasted, they've not reveled, if you will, in the blessings of God. And as a result, they've had to endure the loss of blessings. Such as is the so named character in our text. Our lesson this evening revolves around a young man by the name of Esau. And Esau lost the blessings that had been issued to his brother Jacob in the beginning. Those blessings should have gone to Esau. But Jacob, being the swindler that he was, was able to enjoy the blessings that his father Isaac had given to him. Now, I want to make a couple of statements here tonight. First of all, let me say this. There are several reasons why people experience the loss of blessings. Let me give them to you quickly. Number one, people lose blessings because of laziness. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 30 and 31 puts it this way. It says, I went by the field of the slothful or of the lazy and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. And lo, it was all grown over with thorns and nettles had covered the face thereof. And the stone wall thereof was broken down. Here the author of this particular proverb reveals to us the condition of one who had been given over to laziness. You see here, the slothful man neglected to care for his field and it became overgrown with thorns and weeds. You see, my friend, the lost blessings was the lack of the harvest for the winter that was approaching. And laziness has kept back many people from attaining many blessings. So I said, first of all, those who are lazy seldom, if ever, experience blessings. Number two, blessings are lost if we display a pattern of being continually late for our appointments. In this particular setting that we read earlier at the onset, the introduction, we understand Esau arrived too late to experience the blessings that his father Isaac had for him. Now, of course, Esau did not intend to be late, but he was. His brother Jacob had come minutes earlier and again deceived his father Isaac into giving him the blessing, which once again should have gone to Esau, the firstborn. Perhaps there is someone listening to the broadcast tonight and you intend on getting saved. Oh, you've already planned it out. You've said, well, I'll wait until my friend or my family members decide to trust Jesus as Savior. Listen, beloved listener, if you wait too long, you may find yourself in eternity unsaved and unforgiven. 
The Bible says, behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. God expects for you to respond today. So I say again, blessings are lost if we display a pattern of being continually late. Blessings are lost if we do not follow through and we desire to have the mindset of the slothful or the lazy. But then number three, blessings are lost if we are considered to be lukewarm. Now, that particular statement is geared toward the believer. Listen to the words of the Lord Jesus Christ as he condemned the lukewarm Laodicean church. Jesus said in Revelation 317, because thou sayest, I am rich and increase with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. You see, my friend, when a believer is lukewarm, that is, when they take no consideration of their need to be active, engaged, and alert concerning God's mandate to win souls, to abstain from all appearances of evil, and to serve others in their local church. This in and of itself disgusts their God. It sickens their Savior, and it rids their life of continual blessings. Well, my friend, as I look at the clock, I see here that our time is just about out. But let me ask you, when was the last time you've experienced the blessings of God? As we think about this special, unique time of the year, these seasons, this time of holiday endeavors, I could not think of a better time in which you could position yourself to enjoy the blessings of God. You might say, preacher, where do the blessings begin? Oh, friend, thanks for asking the question. The blessings begin at the cross. The blessings begin by putting your faith, your trust, your belief in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, my friend, no good thing will God withhold to them who walk upright. And you must, in order to enjoy the blessings, you must be willing to come to Christ, walk to the Savior, and give your life to Christ. Invite him into your heart as your Lord and as your Savior. Will you do it? Will you respond to the call of God? Will you prepare yourself for the blessings? Will you be willing to answer the call. And when the war is over and the we won. You've been listening to Pastor Curtis McMiller of Heritage Baptist Church with an encouragement to answer the call. Call us at 262-654-4665 or go on our website, www.heritagebaptistkenosha.com. That's www.heritagebaptistkenosha.com or 262-654-4665. Be a part of Answer the Call.